Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Russell from the Experimental Gambling Research Lab at CQ University Australia. In this video, I'll show you a very basic way to do an experiment within Qualtrics using the randomizer function. Let's get into it. Our experimental design is going to be relatively simple, something that we use quite often. We're going to ask people some measures before we do some sort of intervention to them. So some pre-measures, could be scales, could be whatever you need for your area. Then we're going to randomly allocate them to one of three conditions, either condition one, condition two, or a control group. Uh, and we'll do this using survey flow. Finally, we'll ask them the same questions that we asked them in pre, just afterwards in post. What we'll get from that is a score on whatever we're measuring them on beforehand, a score on whatever we're measuring them on afterwards, and we'll be able to tell if the difference from pre to post is different depending on which group they're in. Now that I've got my experimental design in mind, I'll have a look at my actual survey here. I've got my intro and consent set up so that people are getting all the information that they need before they can send into the study. I've got some screening questions here to make sure that people um, who are answering the survey are the people that I want in the survey, that I'm not asking people who aren't eligible to take part. I've got some basic demographics, and then I've got some pre-measures here. Now, the example that I'm going to use is based around gambling stigma. I want to reduce gambling related stigma here, for example, and see which type of approach is best at reducing stigma. Um, an honor student of mine, Kirsten Brown, did this recently for her thesis and has published a couple of times too. So, you know, this is a really good design, works quite well. Pre-measures. I've got two questions in here. Now, gambling related stigma is really complex. Normally there would be a lot more questions that I would ask, uh, but you'll see here that I've called them whatever I'm calling them, self-violence, and then pre here. This is because in this particular design, I'm going to ask them the same measures here in post, and I'm going to have these called self-violence post, for example, or noticeable post, so that I know which measures go together. So I've got my pre and my post measures set up, and then I've got my blocks here, condition one, condition two, and condition three, which is my control. Now I'm going to need to randomly allocate people into conditions, and we'll do that in survey flow in a minute. Now, for this project, what we used were videos in these blocks, and you can uh, upload videos into a survey so that people see different videos depending on what group they're in. In this case, uh, we had an advocacy video, a contact video where people actually you know, heard stories from gamblers, and we had a control. There was one other condition too, but I'm just keeping it simple here. Just three conditions will do for now. So all they're doing in these different blocks is watching a video, but these blocks could include different interventions in, in other ways. They could include different types of questions, different types of tasks that we need them to do. Could be anything here. So th this thing that I'm teaching you of randomly allocating people into blocks is just the start of the idea um, of how to run an experiment in Qualtrics. You can get really inventive in how you do these things. To do the random allocation, we're going to go up to survey flow. And we're going to do a couple of things here. First up, underneath the pre-measures, I'm going to add in what's called a randomizer element. Now, this is how we do an experiment in Qualtrics. We can use this randomizer thing to randomly allocate participants to one of those three conditions. But in this particular case, we don't have any questions. We're just showing people videos in those conditions. So we want to make sure we also capture which group they're randomly allocated into because we're not actually collecting any data during the random allocation bit. We're just showing them different things. So we're also going to use some embedded data here just to make sure that I have a grouping variable, which will make my analyses so much easier later on. So I'm also going to add in uh, an element here called a group. So my first group here is going to be called uh, condition one. And we'll, you'll see how we use this in a second. But what I'm going to do here is move this branch for condition one, advocacy. Uh, this block goes under the group. And I'm also going to add some embedded data here. So I'll add one here called group name. And this will be a variable that will end up in my data set. And the value will be called advocacy. And I'll also add in a group number um, and what this will do is give me a second variable where anyone who goes down this branch of this condition here is coded as one in group number and advocacy in group name. So I know 
uh, in my data set, anyone who's coded as one saw this advocacy condition. And now I can move that into my randomizer and people will be randomly allocated into that condition. So I'll do that really quickly with my other ones here too. So my second group will be called contact and I'll move that uh, block in there. I'll add some embedded data. So group name here will be, uh, instead of advocacy this time, it will be contact. And my group number here can be two. There we go. And I can move that now up to the randomizer. So now people are either being allocated to uh, condition one or contact. I can rename these. I'll call this one advocacy just so they're the same. Um, and then finally, I'll do a third block here. Uh, I can put it here if I like. It's a group. Uh, this one is control. So I'll move my control group here and I'll add in some embedded data. This time the group name will be control and the group number will be three. Of course, those numbers could be anything you want. These are just purely nominal variables. But if you have a look here, I now have this randomizer thing, which is going to randomly allocate people to these groups and these groups do two things. They show you that particular block of that intervention, that video in this case, or it could be measures or whatever you want it to be, questions, images, whatever you like. Um, and it's also creating this embedded data so that I have some variables at the end of this that I can use in my analyses. Now, if you have a look up here, it's randomly presenting the uh, three of the following elements. So at the moment, by default, it's randomly gonna show them all three of these. If I only wanna show them one, I can just drop that back to randomly present one of the following elements. Now with random allocation, it's not always the case. You're gonna get perfectly equal groups and that's usually pretty okay. In the long run, if you've got enough people going through the survey, they're gonna be pretty even. But if you want to just take a little bit of the randomness away and make it so that the groups end up pretty even at the end um, of your experiment, you can also click this box, evenly present elements, if you want to. Personally, I'll just leave that off. But so have a look at what's happening now. We've got people seeing the intro and consent, the screeners, the demographics, and the pre-measures. And then at this point, they're randomly allocated through the randomizer function, either into the advocacy group where they see the advocacy video in which is in the advocacy block and they're given this embedded data of a group name of advocacy and group number of one or they're sent to the contact condition where they see the contact video instead and the group name and group number reflect that and then uh, the other condition here is the control condition here so they could be randomly allocated to this one as well where they'll see the control video which would have nothing to do with gambling could be you know a nature documentary or something their group name is control and their group number is three. And then afterwards, everybody goes to see the post measures because this is just under the main branch of the survey. So that's how we can program an experiment into Qualtrics. It's just one way of doing it. And it's a very simple design, this one. You can get a lot more complex. You can have uh, nested randomizers. So you can have an initial randomizer and then subsequent randomizers after that as well. If you've got two conditions that you need to randomly allocate at the same time. Uh, so there's lots that you can do here, but that's the basic idea of randomly allocating people to conditions in Qualtrics, which means that we can run experiments within a survey, which is really exciting. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to drop your comments in the comment section below. I'm always happy to do any videos that you want to see as well. So please just come through with requests. Until next time, I'm Dr. Alex Russell from the Experimental Gambling Research Lab at CQ University. See you next time.